Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be talking about a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com in the topic of Newton's laws titled Air Resistance and Skydiving. So let's first talk about air resistance. So the basic idea of air resistance, by the way, air resistance is a pretty big deal to skydiving, but air resistance is caused by an object bumping into air molecules. Uh, well, not just molecules, but also individual atoms. As they as the objects move, as the object moves through relative to the air. So for example, if you stick your hand outside a window as you're driving along in your car, um, you can feel it bump into the air molecules because those air molecules as it bumps into them are pushing your hand backwards. Or in a, with when there's a wind, you can feel the air molecules bumping into you. Let's talk about some of the things that affect the air resistance. So if an object that's falling, we're going to talk about things that are falling because we're talking about skydiving here. So the greater the surface area, that means that you're going to have more molecules you're going to bump into. If you're diving head first, like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or something like that, you are only going to hit molecules with the top of your head. But if you flip your body and you are all of a sudden hitting molecules with the entire front of your body, you're going to hit a lot more molecules. And that's going to make, that's going to increase the air resistance. Each molecule is pushing on you at the same amount. So more molecules means more force. So we can look at that in terms of a direct proportionality. I've linked here a video on direct proportionality. If you're not familiar with that, the surface area is directly proportional to the air resistance. Okay, um, so the bigger the surface area, the bigger the air resistance, the smaller the surface area, the smaller the air resistance. Next, uh, greater air speed, air speed, greater speed, excuse me, greater speed means the object and the air molecules are hitting each other with more force. Okay, if you hit a desk when your hand's moving slowly, your hand doesn't you can't don't feel much pain because you're not, you're not hitting it very hard there's not much force but if you slam your hand into your desk you'll feel a lot of pain because there's a lot of force okay same thing with the air molecules the faster those are going when they're hitting each other the more force they're going to experience okay so that means that we have the same uh, speed is directly proportional to air resistance is the speed increases, air resistance increases. And then finally, if we want to talk about air density, that's the amount of uh, air molecules you can squeeze into a little space, okay, like inside a balloon, for example, but it just in the air, um, in a certain space within the air, the more dense the air is, the more uh, air molecules there are hitting your body because you're hitting air molecules that are more closely compacted together, which means there's going to be more force on your body and therefore more air resistance. This comes in particularly in skydiving. If you skydive from a very high altitude, the air density is less the higher up you go. And so that means that you'll hit less air molecules. There'll be less air resistance. But as you get closer and closer to the surface of the earth, the air gets thicker, we often say. We say it's thinner up in, up in the mountains, um, higher altitude. Um, but as you fall, you'll, you'll get to places where the air density is greater. Okay, so but we saw when the air density was greater, that meant the air resistance was greater. That means they're directly proportional. Okay, so notice all three of these things, surface area, speed, and air density, are all directly proportional, which means as any one of these increases, the air resistance will increase. All right, the sample problems uh, look something like this. This is actually the only level I'm going to do a sample problem for, because the other ones, if I gave you the sample problem, it would be the question. So I'm going to give you everything you need to know, but you're going to have to do the problem yourself, okay? Which is always the goal to make sure you're learning physics. All right, so consider three spherical objects traveling through the same region in air. Radius and speed values are stated. Given that everything else is equal, rank them according to the amount of air resistance they encounter. Well, remember uh, uh, radius, which would be surface area, which would affect the surface area. Um, the bigger the surface area, the bigger the air resistance. And for speed or velocity, the bigger the speed, the bigger the air resistance. So this one has the biggest surface area and the biggest 
uh, velocity. So that's going to be the greatest um, uh, air amount of air resistance. Then between the two that are left, we see they have the same velocity, but this one has a bigger radius. Okay, that means it's going to have a greater uh, air resistance than this one. This one's going to have the smallest air resistance. M meant middlest, which is the term they use in the concept builder. Okay, so that would rank them in order of air resistance. This had the biggest velocity and surface area radius. Um, and so it would uh, be the greatest. This one had the smallest radius and velocity. And so it would be the smallest air resistance. All right, let's move on to the uh, middle level. Um, so we, now we're going to learn about something called terminal velocity. Okay, terminal does not mean you're going to die. It just means the end. It's used to talk about terminal, like when somebody is terminal, they're going to die because that's the end of their life. In this case, it's the end of a changing velocity. Let's take a look at what happens here as a skydiver falls out of a plane. Well, obviously, I think to everyone, they will begin to accelerate downward because gravity is pulling them down. So they jump out of the plane, they start to fall. Okay. As they fall, they'll speed up. I think everyone's pretty familiar with that too. Here's, here's the interesting part though. As they speed up, we learn speed is directly uh, proportional to air resistance. So as the, as the velocity increases, the force of the air resistance will increase as well. Well, when the force of the air resistance increases, that means the net force on this skydiver will decrease because we have gravity, I'll just put a G, and we have air resistance, I'll uh, uh, abbreviate that with an AR, and if air resistance is getting bigger and bigger, it starts out as nothing, right? Starts out just gravity, okay? And then as air resistance gets bigger and bigger, as the speed is increasing, that means the net force is going to be uh, decreasing, right? Because when we combine these two, this is still pretty big compared to this little one. But when we compare, compare these two, it's getting smaller. And by this time, they're actually equal. So what happens when they're equal? Eventually, the spy, skydiver will be traveling so fast that the magnitude of the air resistance, I should label that AR, right? The air resistance is... Uh, is the same as the magnitude of the gravity. Okay, I, I had to include the term magnitude because they're not the same. This is down, this is up, and uh, force uh, is a vector, so direction matters. Okay, but the magnitude of this is equal to the magnitude of that. That means that there's no net force, and, we've, and if there's no net force, there's no acceleration. Okay, and so we've reached a speed which will be called terminal velocity. Why? Because it's no longer increasing. It's the fastest this sky ever can go with its current air resistance. Okay, now of course we see skydivers change their air resistance by changing the way they're facing. We talked about at the beginning with Tom Cruise. When he points himself straight down, he has less air resistance so he can fall faster before he reaches terminal velocity. When he flattens himself out so the air is bumping into his entire front side then um, or entire back side then um, it increases the air resistance and he'll slow down okay um, so don't forget that net force causes acceleration so when we've reached this terminal velocity we have um, the two forces canceled out so there is zero net force that means at this point there is zero acceleration Okay, let's talk briefly about the problem, even though we aren't going to solve it um, together. Okay, so this is what the problems will look like. A skydiver is dropped out of an airplane at an altitude of 10,000 feet. I'm pretty sure they all have that same thing there. Reaches a terminal velocity at, and this changes, but I'm pretty sure that this number is always the same as a D. Okay, you should check it to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it's always the same as D. Because after that, nothing changes. The velocity stays the same. There's zero acceleration. There's zero net force. The air resistance matches the, um, air resistance matches the force of gravity. Okay. All right. Uh, and so then we see A, B, and C, and you'll be given some things like A, B, 
C and D as the person is falling, and you'll have different vectors at different places, and you'll click through and pick the one that has the vectors that actually make sense. Okay, so that's how it works. But let's talk about this. So then the bottom, it says toggle through the set of vector diagrams. That's what I was just talking about at the right to identify the relative magnitude of the velocity vector for each of these four positions. Well, each question, one is for the velocity vector, one is for the acceleration, one's for net force, one's for air resistance, one's for gravity. I actually threw in an extra one. So it's only four of those five that you'll see. Okay, so let's just talk briefly about what happens to each of these things. So velocity starts out as zero when you when you start falling out of the plane, right? Okay, so it says dropped to indicate, and normally you'd say jumped, but we don't want an initial velocity, so we use the term dropped. So it starts with zero velocity, and then that velocity is going to increase and increase and increase. Okay, it's going to increase by less and less each second because of the acceleration changing. The acceleration starts out at 9.8, right? 9.8 meters per second squared because the only force is gravity. But a split second later, as soon as there is speed, then there is air resistance, which is going to start to reduce the acceleration. Remember, by the time you hit terminal velocity, then your um, air resistance matches your gravity. Okay. And so there will be no errors, no acceleration, no net force by the time you hit terminal velocity. Net force goes just like acceleration. It starts out as the weight up here. And then as it goes and the acceleration and the air resistance gets bigger and bigger, then um, the net force gets smaller and smaller until these two are equal. And then the net force is zero at terminal velocity. Air resistance. Um, is getting bigger and bigger, right? It starts out at zero because the speed is zero. So there's actually no air resistance. And by the time you get down here, air resistance is so big that it matches the acceleration of gravity. Okay. Gravity, the force of gravity um, does not change the entire time because that's based on the weight of the person. Um, and that does not change just because you're falling faster or slower. All right. And so with that information, you should be able to find the right uh, vector diagrams that you need to choose. OK. All right. Uh, so this is just a summary, really, of what we just said. And that summary is going to also get you through the wizard level. OK, so remember, initially, the speed will be zero because you're just falling out of the plane. At terminal velocity, you'll reach your fastest velocity for the body position that you're using. OK, air resistance starts at zero because you're not moving. So you're not bumping into any air uh, vertically. Um, then uh, at terminal velocity, the air resistance matches the gravity, but it's in the other direction, right? It's getting bigger instead of or it's going up instead of down. That's why they cancel out. Acceleration starts out at 9.8 meters per second squared because there's no air resistance. The only force is, gra uh, is gravity. And we're assuming we're still close enough to the surface of the Earth that that number would be appropriate. Uh, it might be 9.7 or 9.6 as you get up to 10,000 feet. Um, but the idea is approximately that. Okay. And when we reach terminal velocity, there is no acceleration because there is no net force. OK, because the upward force of the uh, air resistance matches the downward force of gravity. The net force at the beginning, of course, was the weight. OK, because um, at the beginning uh, there was only one force, which was the force of gravity, which is the weight. OK, gravitational force on the skydiver is always the skydiver's weight. That doesn't change. Um, if we wanted to get into another level of physics, which you might in college or in an advanced AP type or IB type course, you might talk about the an integral of how the gravitational force uh, goes the get, gets slightly bigger as we go from a, like a 9.6 place down to the ground where you'd get to 9.8. Okay, you could talk about how that changes gradually as you're going and the effect that has on a gravitational force. But that is not our discussion. Okay, so it's just weight at the beginning, weight at the end, weight at every moment in between. Gravitational force does not change. All right. With that, you should have enough to be able to puzzle through all the problems in this concept builder. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about skydiving and air resistance, go ahead.
click that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beard Man.